Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is the horoscope for Pisces. If Pisces is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so, as you can see, we have the Knight of Cups, which, yeah, it's one of my favorite cards. For me, it represents the beloved, the return of the beloved. That moment when suddenly you are so aware that your guardian angel is around. Right when the divine really starts interacting with you in dreams, and you know, in your waking life, you're seeing synchronicities, patterns, numbers, so on. This is that energy. That's that energy. And when I see the card, or when I see the card, I'm like, yes, okay, here we go. We're about to have uh, a period of time here that's going to be kind of really full of love and agape and, and, um, you know, the, the kind of beautiful merging of spirit and our emotionality. All right, let's take a look and see what these tea leaves are going to tell us. And if you want to like subscribe, or leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Absolutely. Okay, so we're just going to kind of spin this thing around. It looks like we have a ram. And I saw it in the full body and also the face. We kind of have a pan creature here. At least the head of it. You can see... Uh, the, the front of the face here. Oops. Oh, I just totally touched that. The nose, <laughs> the mouth, uh, kind of the under jaw here. And you can kind of see where there would be the, uh, horn that's kind of curled like a ram, right? So kind of a pan, a pan kind of energy here, maybe a satyr, um, now up here, it looks like we have a mighty deer. You can see the side of the face. Here's the eye. Here's the nose right here. Uh, we have the antlers up here, kind of um, looking at the rest of the body there. Okay, so very wilderness forward energy here. Now we also have, and let me show you the ram really quick. We have the ram right here. Um, standing kind of hind legs down here. Here's the back. Here's the body. Here's the leg. And of course the head up there. So we have the ram there again. We also have the number 32, 32. And let me see, where did you go? Oh yes, the face of the rams here as well. So if you turn it kind of this way, you can see this is like the side of the face. And here's the eye, here's the mouth, here is the part of the horn that would wrap around. So we have this kind of real uh, Aries, maybe ram, like a person that has the attributes of a ram. So let's get this all together. We have pan, we have a ram, that is reiterated twice. We also have the deer, okay? So this really truly leads me to, to believe that you are in, you're in it. You're in this very spiritual moment of your life, uh, an awakening, absolutely. This is a time where you are receiving potent spiritual downloads, okay? I would imagine if you were woken up at, you know, whatever time in the morning, whenever you've gone to bed and you've started to really get into your uh, dream cycles, okay? If you were woken up and you could remember your dream very clearly in that moment, I believe that you would really be having 
uh, kind of these encounters, right? With some kind of representation of the divine. And I feel like it's almost like you're going back to school in your dreams, right? You're being taught, you're being shown things. They're showing up and saying, hey, let's go for a ride. And you, you know, you get in their little like dream flying saucer and you zoom across, you know, the whole planet and they're showing you how things work and what does this mean? And, you know, these kinds of really large picture types of encounters, right? Now, we can have dreams and encounters with the divine, with other intelligences and so on that just seem kind of scrambled, right? Or maybe it's focused on one particular thing. Um, you know, you're looking for some kind of answer and here, they're delivering it to you. Here's that very particular answer. But then there are times when we are, we're going through these kind of moments of spiritual evolution. And these often kind of really manifest as large picture ideas like cosmology, cosmonogy, where did we come from? What was the beginning? What was the first thing? What was the thing before the beginning, right? What does it all mean? What am I supposed to be doing here? Um, you know, these kinds of huge, huge questions, right? These aren't just little things. This is like going to cosmic university. And I do, I feel that you are uh, right in there. You are absolutely um, going through a, a real spiritual education right now. Um, now, we have the deer. So I do believe that there is going to be a very particular moment, an encounter. Something where you see maybe even like high strangeness, um, something out of this reality, right? Like a glitch in the matrix. Um, something that really just stops you in your tracks and you think, my goodness, what is this? You know? Um, I, I remember last summer, not this past summer, uh, but summer of 2023, I was talking to quite a few people who were having encounters with orbs, uh, large orbs in their kind of uh, property, right? On the property line. And they would show up like in the trees, just kind of hovering, right? Um, sometimes they would follow while they were out walking or taking hikes or foraging or whatever. And it wasn't just one person and it wasn't uh, more than one person in the same location. It was quite a few different people. And, and I, I believe, you know, sometimes these things really do. There are kind of like a, um, there's like a flap of, of, uh, you know, a lot of encounters, a lot of this high strangeness or paranormal or um, extraordinary or, or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, things happening to the collective. Now, I feel that really starting to stir once again. Now, I don't know that it's the orbs, but I feel like in these moments where we've had a lot of unrest and chaos in the world. There's, you know, just these storms that have gone through in this last few months. Um, in, you know, in the United States, we just had that huge hurricane. Um, and I've, I've been praying, you know, praying, and I hope you are too, um, for all of those affected. I mean, it's a huge amount of uh, 500 miles, you know, of just devastation. And um, 
you know, these things and all the other things that are going on. I mean, there's so much going on in the world globally, right? Uh, a lot of tension, a lot of anxieties, stress. It's very stressful, um, you know, and I do believe that when there are these kind of, it's like the collective web is so tightened, right? It almost feels like it's going to break. Everything's just going to fall apart, um, but it won't, and it, it, it won't, but in these times, I feel like this is when we really begin to have a lot, a lot of encounters and phenomena and this kind of thing happening. So I do feel like you are stepping into this place, but here's the thing is that you are probably far more prepared than most people. And I believe that's true because, listen, you're here. You have some knowledge of the strange, of the oddities of life, of the world. I wouldn't be surprised if you yourself are quite clairvoyant, psychic. And so it will be even more intense for you. Okay, so prepare yourself. Start working on your grounding, making sure that you're feeling, you know, like you're not having any major blockages in your energy flow, right? Getting into your spiritual practices, making sure that you are, well, it's like going in for a tune-up, right? You got to go get the car, you know, looked over and all of the fluids topped off and, and whatever, right? And so, yeah, sometimes... We got to stop and remember, yeah, I need a little bit of a it's mind, body, soul kind of tune up. And whatever that looks like for you, right? The big thing, and I will always push this as a big, big thing, sleep. Making sure that you are in a sleep habit, right, routine, uh, that is beneficial to you. Now, it's not the same for all of us, right? Some of us um, really need like nine, ten hours of sleep. And then other people, which oddly I found of myself, um, really thrive on about six or seven hours of sleep. I used to love this, like all the, I, I still love to sleep. Um, I don't have the opportunity to sleep very long <laughs> for long periods of time unless I'm sick. Uh, but I have found that I actually feel worse if I sleep for too long. Uh, and so when I'm sleeping like six hours, yeah, I don't know what it is. I just, I feel really good. Uh, well, is you know, pretty decent. <laughs> so, um, whatever it looks like for each of us, right? It's different. So, you know yourself. Make sure that is kind of the, like, Founda big foundational thing, right? Getting enough sleep, getting restorative sleep, and also allowing yourself access to that dream state, the interior realm, right? And so let's see, what else do we have going on here? We had, yes, this person right here, and this is who I keep looking at, but first I wanna look, we have a large N, okay? So the letter N, Okay, uh, so we also have, oh, there's the ram again. Look at that. You can see the ram. Here's the head. Here's the body. So that ram, let's talk about that ram too in just a minute. Now, we have this person who is holding an oil lamp, okay? So the oil lamp is like the genie, right? You rub the side and the genie comes out or the gin comes out and gives you three wishes. So this is a good time for manifesting for you. Okay, now I want to talk about this Aries or uh, Ram person because I, it's obviously not you, um, but I think that it is maybe somebody who has been kind of chasing you romantically and 
Uh, we also have the letter C, Y, or maybe it's J, Y. Okay, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, maybe that large N we have up there, it could be somebody with an N name. Um, but I'm going to ask the Oracle of the Radiant Sun cards. These are them. We're going to ask, who is this Aries person? What's going on with them? I want to know because I'm nosy. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, all right. So we're going to probably do six. I always say three. Um, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't tell me enough. Okay, idealism, discrimination. Exaltation, so a lifting up. Okay, I'm gonna go three more. Control, protection, manipulation. Okay, so I get the feeling that this is somebody who, oof, it does feel like it may be an older male or a middle-aged male maybe, a masculine person, and really um, kind of a strange vibe here. Uh, somebody who maybe is, very like in the new age scene or maybe they're kind of a hippie or kind of you know just like give off this this image right they have the aesthetic maybe of kind of this free spirited easy going you know kind of um peace and love or you know whatever maybe like very zen or whatever it is right um maybe kind of weaves uh, an atmosphere of real idealistic thinking, like utopian thinking, okay? Um, now, I feel like within their, I don't even know if it's family, friends, kind of whoever it is, they, maybe they have students, I almost wonder if this is like a guru or um, some kind of spiritual teacher or something, right? Somebody that people kind of seek out for answers. But I feel like, I almost feel like this is maybe like an elder to you because I, I, I feel like it's like you've been watching them for years, right? You've been watching them kind of do their thing you know, spit their game, um, just really kind of manipulate people. And we have manipulation right here. Um, I believe that this is somebody who is not super inclusive. They kind of portray themselves as being so, and maybe, you know, really try to push this like agenda of, um, being again, like this really kind of free spirited, inclusive, maybe even communal, whatever kind of deal. And yet there is a real air of discrimination, of being very exclusive about who they let close into their, you know, their friends group or family or, or you know, whatever um, following. Uh, now, here's the exaltation so this is a lifting up like you we exalt you right you're lifted up as like a, a a deity or um you know a high priestess high priest or like i said a guru so i feel like there's almost kind of you know how they say like with a narcissist um there's a thing i forget what it's called exactly but basically it's when they're happy with you right they and you're like the golden one you like they their light shines upon you and it makes you feel golden right and this is part of a manipulator a narcissist um maybe somebody huh 
car alarm is going off somewhere. Uh, and, and that's weird because I'm not in the city. Uh, but yeah, so somebody who, um, somebody, well, oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought here. Uh, yeah, so basically, I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going to rewind in my head. Um, but yeah, somebody who uh, makes you feel very special. But listen, when you misstep or you don't do what they want you to do or, you know, they're not seeing um, the behavior that they want from you or whatever, right? then it's like you mean nothing to them. And this is all a control thing, right? It's all control. It's all manipulation. And uh, and I do, and I believe that, you know, there is a call for kind of this real protection of self. And, um, and I can see you already knowing. Like, you know this person's game. Um, I feel like, it, again, like I said, you've grown up watching this person or you've been around them for years right and yet you still know that you have to protect yourself from them because they are they get their claws just sunken in right and so I just I see this person showing up and showing up and and I almost feel like it's like they're promising you they're promising you, you'll be so happy, you know, if you just like kind of get into the fold, right? You can just fall in line. And I'm thinking of falling in line because we have these lines of people. It looks like a line of people here, a line of people here. And we also have the mermaid, which is the siren, right? And so there's this feeling of yeah, call, being called by, by this beautiful voice, this like hope, this desire, this yearning, right? And, and it's like, it just, you never get there, right? You never get there or when you do, it's, it's wreckage. It's just absolutely a mess. And as we know, with the siren, it's like the beautiful voice calling out to the, um, to the sailors and, and, you know, singing the songs and the sailors uh, come, they come sailing towards the voice and they uh, immediately, right? They immediately are... Um, ran right into the rocks to their demise. I had to get my scissors. I just noticed on my, the cat, it's the cat. I don't know, I'm probably not supposed to cut it, but I'm gonna, it's gonna drive me nuts. And you know, the problem here is if I don't cut it, and this is, we can thank ADD right here for this. Um, it's gonna, hang and it's going to get stuck on something and pull it further so put a little bit of something on nail polish or something maybe we'll hold it uh so anyways um yeah i think that that's why this aries person the, and it's just i feel like it's like i there are times where um e you're almost being like pursued more by this person to come back. Maybe it is that like you left the family, you know, you got to a certain age, you went out into the world and you just thought, I'm not going back because I don't want to, I just don't vibe with them. I don't trust them. You know, it's just not the way I want to live, you know, whatever it is. But I feel like every so often there, there's kind of like, yeah, like in a cycle, all of a sudden they're calling, showing up, inviting you to stuff. 
you know, um, they're worried about you. Why haven't you called your mom? You know, whatever it is. And, um, and so, yeah, watch out for that. I think that's, you know, something that, well, you know, it's always stressful, especially like when we've gone kind of no contact with people and they like can not kind of understand, right? Like I'm setting boundaries here. So, and, and that's, I feel like this person, whoever this person is, maybe it, it could be an ex, right? It could, I don't know. But I feel like if it was like somebody from the past, I feel like there was an age gap because there is like this power dynamic kind of energy. Okay. Um, and it just, I don't know. I almost feel like you kind of get the ick a little bit from them. So um, let's go ahead. I want to look at our lucky numbers. We're going to do three lucky numbers. All right, number six, number six. Number five, <laughs> well, that's nice. Six, five, 25. Six, five, and a 25. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do our inner child oracle cards. We're just going to kind of flip through Stop where it feels right. And this will kind of punctuate the reading. So number 24, let love guide you. Choose to see the good in the world today. Choose to see the good in the world today. I don't know about you, but I will say when old people come back from parts of my life that... Uh, I've left behind, it can be really, really triggering. It can be, it, it kind of like almost pulls you from where you're at in life and transport, transports you to a place that you've worked so hard to get away from. So I feel like with this card, right, choose to see the beauty, the good, the love in life, this is like, where maybe we can work on like really grounding ourselves. When we have these kind of stressors come in and they're out of our control, we have to remind ourselves like, this is not my world. This is not the life that I have built for myself. However, they're making me feel or the energies they're bringing with them or if I'm like kind of just slipping right back into these old times. I feel like my old self, the, the last model, the last, you know, 10 models ago. <laughs> it's like, baby, I'm an iPhone, whatever. What, I don't know what came out. I, I think iPhone 15 or whatever. Like that model that you are bringing around now, that's like, you know, an iPhone 5. Get out of here with it. You know, I'm not that person anymore. And you have to keep talking to yourself about this, reminding yourself, okay? Don't let it take over because it, it just, it does. You know, it really easily can. Um, so that's it. I was like, wait, what's next? Yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, Pisces, I love you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you would be so kind as to like the video, or if you haven't subscribed yet, thinking about doing that, hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Also, if you want to leave a comment, definitely do that. I read them all. They mean the world to me. Uh, and what else? No, I think that's all. All right, I love you, take care of yourself. It's October, it's almost Halloween. 
Um, I'm not a huge Halloween person. I, it seems like I would be, uh, but I feel, I've always dressed silly or weird or different, you know? So I'm like, oh, okay. The best thing about Halloween is that you can buy cool jewelry and like, you know, clothes that you can make into like, you know, everyday clothes. <laughs> um, when all the costume stores are open. So that's, I do like that part. I definitely do. So I don't know. I'm just happy that it is October. It's going to be cold soon. Um, I am here for that. Definitely. All right. I love you. I love you. I love you. Take care of yourself. Good night.